Good morning, Secretary Rice. Good morning. I want to talk to you about the Christmas Eve shooting on December 24th of 2006. According to documents that the committee has obtained, a Blackwater employee who was drunk shot and killed a security guard for the Iraqi vice president inside the protected green zone in Baghdad. This didn't happen on a mission protecting diplomats. It happened on a Christmas Eve after a party inside the green zone. And if this shooting had happened here in the United States, there would have been an arrest, a criminal conviction, and a prosecution. And if one of our soldiers serving in Iraq had engaged in this type of behavior, they would have faced a court-martial under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. But according to what the committee has determined, this is what the State Department did. It flew the contractor out of Iraq within 36 hours. Then it asked Blackwater to make a payment to the family. And according to the emails that we have been provided with, a payment to the families was considered and then, quote, the best way to assure that the Iraqis don't take the steps, such as telling Blackwater that they are no longer able to work in Iraq. And my simple question to you is, as we head toward another Christmas Eve, do you agree that the State Department made a mistake in responding to that incident? First of all, that incident has been, or that um, circumstance has been referred to the Justice Department. And um, I've testified here that there's a lacuna in the law, and we are working to get appropriate, uh, we would like to get appropriate legislation that speaks to the uh, prosecution of civilian contract personnel uh, working uh, in circumstances like Iraq. That was one of the findings of the uh, panel that I sent out. And in fact, we very much would like to see that because you're right. The Uniform uh, Code of Military Justice provides a context for um, our soldiers. And uh, there is protection inside the United States. We believe there's a lacuna and it needs to be filled. When we had the CEO of Blackwater, Eric Prince, sitting in the exact chair that you're sitting in right now, I went through this with him and he told the committee under oath that in his opinion all Blackwater employees were already subject to the Uniform Code of Military Justice, the War Crimes Act, and other international uh, accountabilities that our current military is subject to. And then I went through the individual statutes with him and he seemed to admit that if you look at the language of those statutes, they don't in fact apply unless they are accompanying U.S. military personnel. I, I agree. And that's why we're seeking uh, and working for legislation. And uh, we're very happy to work with anyone who, who would like to, to get that legislation. There is a lacuna in our law about this. And uh, even though this particular case, I want to, to reiterate, has been referred to the Department of Justice for their action, we believe that there is a hole. The House recently passed legislation addressing this very issue. Have you taken a public position on the merits of that uh, legislation? We uh, believe that there are some problems in that particular House law, but we are prepared to work uh, to get a law, uh, working with the Senate and working with the House, to get a law that we think addresses the problem. Are you prepared today to identify the specific problems that you have with the legislation? Uh, I, I think we should allow the discussions that are going on that are being led, as these are by the Justice Department. To, um, to get that law, but I'm very strongly supportive of a law that would uh, close this loophole. How do you square your support for that concept of this legislation with the White House's stated public opposition to the legislation? Because the specific legislation uh, has a number of problems and concerns from the point of view not just of those who would have to operate in the field, but also the Justice Department. And of course, it is the Justice Department that uh, advises the President on uh, this kind of matter. Uh, this same email we were referring to, which was actually sent out by Margaret Scobie from Baghdad the day after the incident in question on Christmas Eve, says, will you be, doing, be following up in Blackwater to do all possible, sure, all possible to assure that a sizable compensation is forthcoming? Are you aware of the actual compensation that was paid to the family of this Iraqi I'm security I'm not aware guard? of the actual amount in this case. I, I don't believe it. I can't recall it at this point, but I, I will... Uh, say, Congressman, that this, this uh, process or this practice of compensation is uh, something that is used. Uh, it's a part of a kind of cultural norm, and it is used.
are you used aware by us and used <clears throat> by the military. Are you aware that the charge d'affaires had recommended a payment of $250,000 and that the actual settlement was $15,000? I know that there was a significant difference in what was recommended and what was done. Do you agree that $15,000 is not a sizable compensation? I'm, I'm not going to second guess the decision at the time, uh, Congressman, because I was not uh, on the spot and I didn't review all of the factors that might have been taken into account. But the the practice of compensation, of course, is one that uh, is used uh, fairly broadly in, in the region. It seems that if this government is paying $1,222 a day to Blackwater for the services of its employees, that a compensation of $15,000 for the life of an Iraqi who is guarding the vice president of Iraq seems like a very meaningless compensation. Gentlemen's time has expired. Mr. Hodes.